This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be looking at this error. The none type object is not subscriptable. We're going to learn what this means, how we can avoid it, and how we can make our very own custom objects subscriptable. But first of all, let's create a real world example where you would encounter this. And for this example, I'm going to use a function called getData, which uses a Boolean called connected. And that's going to be set by default to true. So if the user has an internet connection, then this is going to simulate that we have that internet connection. And what this function is going to return is a dictionary of type string to integer or none. So it's a union type because sometimes when you make an API request, if you don't have internet or something goes wrong, there's going to be a chance that you're going to get nothing back. So the logic for this function will be return this dummy data, which is a dictionary with string keys and integer values, just as I've defined up here, if we have a connection. Otherwise, we're going to return none. So that's going to simulate a very important function in our program. Next, let's try to actually get this data. So I'm going to create my if name is equal to main check, create a variable called data, which will be of type dictionary string to integer, and that's going to equal get data. And since connected is set to true by default, we're going to leave it at that. Or actually this type is an optional, so we also need to include none in the type declaration. And what we're going to do next is print the data at the index of A and the data at the index of B. Right now, if we were to run this, it would run just fine. On my code editor, I'm going to have these red squiggly lines because I'm using MyPy, which warns me that this might be none, which means that can potentially be a bad idea if we try to index none, because none is not subscriptable. So just to demonstrate what's going to go wrong, we're going to set connected to false, which means our function is going to return none. So the next time we run this, we're going to run into the type error that none type object is not subscriptable. And that's because instead of seeing the data or the dictionary here, what we actually got back is none. And we cannot perform this operation on none. We cannot perform that get operation on none. So to keep it simple, an object which is subscriptable is an object that supports indexing. And that can be a string or a list or a tuple. As long as you can index it, it's going to be considered subscriptable. For example, if we were just to remove all of this for now and just print hello at the index of one, a string is subscriptable because we can access a position. And if we were to run this, we would get E as an output. But before we move on from this example, you might be asking, okay, so how do we handle this correctly? Because the red squiggly lines are there, which means this is a bad idea. Well, whenever something might be none, you're going to want to check that it is not none. So if data is not none, or you can do the opposite, you can check if it is none and do something there. But if the data is not none, we're going to print the data at that index because we know it's going to be a dictionary. Else, we'll print that there's no data. And just like that, we will have solved this silly riddle. As you can see, if there's no internet connection, we're going to get no data back. But if we set connected to true, then there will be internet, which means we will be able to get that JSON data back or that dictionary back. And that will mean that we can access that information with our subscriptable object. So again, an object which is not subscriptable is an object which cannot be indexed. For example, we have a value which is equal to 100. If we try to print this value at the index of zero, we're going to get another type error, that integer object is not subscriptable. But next, let me show you how you can create your very own custom subscriptable objects. And for this, we're going to create a class called integer, which takes numbers of type list of integer as a parameter. And then we assign those numbers to the instance. And that's the only information that this class is going to contain. Next, I'm going to create an object from this class. So integers of type integers are going to equal integers. And we're going to pass in 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And since this class is nothing but a wrapper for a list of integers, it should come quite naturally that you would want to index it, which means that if we want to find out what's at the index of two of these integers, this is something you would naturally want to do with a class such as this one. Unfortunately, at the moment, we're going to get that integers object is not subscriptable because we did not add that functionality just yet. But to make a class subscriptable, all you need to do is specify the getItem method. 
The item will be of type integer in this case and will return an integer. Then we can just return self.numbers at the index, which will be the item. So that the next time we run this, we should get 30 back as an output because now we gave our class the functionality it needs to make this object subscriptable. But if I were you, I wouldn't just stop there. If you're going to include this functionality, I would also include the set item functionality and the delete item functionality so that you will also have the opportunity to perform operations as such. Integers at the index of three will equal, let's say 10. It will allow you to perform these kinds of operations. Or if you want to delete an integer, such as ints at the index of three, you'll be able to do that. Without these two methods, it's not going to work because the class won't know how to handle that kind of operation. And if you were to run this, you'll see that we'll first get the type error that integers object does not support item assignment. But if we were to remove that, we'll get another type error that integers object does not support item deletion. So again, you can handle those using the following Dunder methods, set item and delete item. But that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. I've seen this object is not subscriptable error everywhere. It's one of the most common errors I see on the internet or at least amongst my students. So I just thought it would be worthwhile explaining how it works and how you can fix it and even how you can just create your own subscriptable object. But yeah, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.